All right. Hi, I'm Courtney Lee. I study education policy research in California uh, most days of the week, and I really enjoy it when my data wrangling environment and my graphics environment are in the same place and I get to iterate r rather quickly and everything's reproducible. A lot of the work from these slides are actually produced some months ago and I quickly whipped it up into this slide deck. So this is um, what we have. <laughs> um, so before we start even like looking at how to build maps in R is just we need, we, we, I am assuming that you have a just a working knowledge of R. Like right now, it, a lot of the code snippets I will show are mostly procedural and less over, less over syntax. And then also um, some of the data you want to visualize and then also an idea of what you want as your result. So just an idea, it doesn't have to be perfect because um, there's just all these features within R that just makes it so that you can quickly layer on your new features as you go along and then if you decide you want to change your output, you totally can within one line. So some of the, the problems I'm looking at right now, this is just a glimpse of the data that I'm looking at, especially at the regional distribution of to some college workers in the state of California, meaning they have more than a high school degree, but less than a bachelor's. And specifically, this applies to uh, workers who are in the occupation sector, um, public and protective services, meaning like police or uh, security officers. So right now this table is fairly boring. This just tells us like, okay, we, we have 10 regions of the state and these are all the percentages of all the percentages of workers in these regions who have some college educational attainment. And as far as I can tell, this table only really shows me minimum, a, a minimum and a maximum fairly easily and that's it. But what if I turned into a bar chart? Like, great, okay, now I can say that, okay, these 10 regions, mo most of them hover between 40 and 60% of their workers in this occupation area just have some college degree, but it doesn't really tell me, like, what are the regional, um, what, what do these regions look like? Because this bar chart just makes it seem like, oh, these regions look all the same, but really, they don't. It's, this is what we're gonna build towards. And, um, we get to see that some regions of California, especially all these county groups that are uh, assembled next to each other, they don't exactly look all the same. So how we get there is that we have some libraries that I really, really enjoy using. Uh, the first one is ggplot, is one of the more um, modern graphics libraries with R. And then also maps, map data, and map projections contains um, R sort of shape files in a sense, but as a CSV. In, uh, in the library, and that way we don't need to go forth and extract a shapefile from somewhere and then import it, although you can with um, other libraries. Um, so this is the USA as a data frame as a country because the maps, map data, and map projections library, they um, contain the, a lot of just common geographies you would want to use, like countries and states and um, counties. So at the very bottom, we see latitudes and longitudes and groups and orders. So the group and order columns are important because it tells the plotting engine which order to plot all our latitudes and longitudes in. And then we get something like on the right, which is something very default ggplot. It's just very rectangular and it's a color scheme I'm not really a fan of. So I'm gonna change first the color and then the color, uh, sorry, the projection. Um, you can see with the first yellow line that I just picked a color like green and also a projection, I also like a conic projection and we get something like this. So the thing about policy data is that I really like um, visualizing data at as far as granular as possible. And for the purposes of my work, I really like counties. <laughs> and uh, we're able to pull the county level data as rather quickly within one line from these um, libraries with uh, just calling the map data set county and pulling specifically for California. And we get something like this. We get all 58 California's counties beautifully mapped and this is just like a base layer. Um, so within, usually but my policy data it just contains geographies with names and not really much about latitudes or longitudes or where things are. So I'm able to just use a regular old join highlighted up there with um, my latitudes and longitudes on the left hand side and then on the right hand side my, uh, the data I want to visualize. So specifically for this purpose I'm able to get data from the borough labor statistics especially as they break things, uh, break labor statistics down into uh, metropolitan statistical areas and for that, um, they, they break the state into 34 metropolitan statistical areas, which is a lot. Um, but further also, in order to answer my original question of the, 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 the distribution of uh, some college workers across the state, like the community colleges actually produces um, 
has some a definition of how they want to break up a state and they break it up into 15 areas because they want, want to do some coordination of uh, associate's degrees distribution, for instance. So we break it down into 15 regions. That's still a lot. And especially with two so sources of data that don't really talk to each other and they sometimes overlap, but not always, um, I had to further break down the state into 10 regions and we get something like this, which is a lot easier to see visually, like, okay, these are certain regions of the state, and um, this is where I want to like, look for variation. And we get there. Um, so here's a really simple gradient uh, map of the state, especially of uh, some college workers in the state. We get to see that this orange, is very, that this orange only really highlights the fact that Central California, Central Valley, has, is the area with the highest some college attainment. Um, but then I don't really like this color scheme, so I'm just gonna change it with a default color scheme that um, it, available in ggplot, it's called scale fill distiller, and then within one line I'm able to get something along the lines of this bluish scheme, and I get to see, okay, there, I can see the variation a lot more clear, and we can see somewhere along the, like towards the central coast of California where um, the, the educational attainment for some college workers is middling. Um, and I, I'm, I'm okay about this color scheme, but uh, I want to change it again. So I do. I have another de default called Veritas that um, is widely available, and I got to see the, this very like stark um, interpretation of the variation of some college ed educational attainment across the state. And now I can see like the very northern part of the Californians. Uh, a little farther so Southern California, they're roughly the same in educational attainment, even though they're completely dif different regions um, of the state. And I and that that is a lot more uh, compelling to me as I as I go forth with this research and look for uh, other reasons why some college uh, educational attainment across the state has um, is, is like all over the place. So overall, mapping in R is rather straightforward and really fast and super self-contained and iterable and super reproducible, and my slides are available on GitHub. <laughs>